I wrote my question down because I was afraid I'd get up here and wouldn't be able to do it right. So I'm going to start with what I wrote. Now, um, if you were a practicing a virtual reality. <laughs> I tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> now, if you were practicing a virtual reality. Okay. You're not going there with us, are you? <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, we're always right. But... Practice that with us. In other words, that's as big an issue as the issue that you're wanting to talk about here. Yeah. So if there's something that you want to do and you feel inadequate or not sure that you can do it, what is the best mental approach to it? You did something wise. You wrote it down. In other words, you wanted so much to be clear and succinct that you wrote it down. Now, your action was very good, but your statement or your justification for your action sort of counters the value of the action. Right. So, if you had it to do over again... I would do some pre-paving. And pre-paving, which is the, the mental envisioning. Picturing. So, what would you envision? Coming up here and being able to just talk to you and tell you what's been going on with me and what I need help with. And toward what end? Um, the answer to my question. The Toward what end? Feeling good. Feeling so, peace. So you fast forward, you're leaving the seminar or you're awakening tomorrow and you feel so refreshed and you feel so exhilarated and you're <laughs> excited that you got your question into a clear enough place and that your resistance was low enough that when you raised your hand you were easily seen and that the timing of your question fell into the seminar in such a powerful way that the groundwork had all been laid and so the timing as it unfolded was just perfect for you and you had your wits about you and you got your hand up and you got called on which is like winning the lottery <laughs> <laughs> and now here you are in the chair you spoke your question you got your answer and you're living happily ever after great <laughs> so what is it <laughs> okay, well, I won't use this. <laughs> All right, mine, I, um, I have been single for um, 13 years. And now we're talking about something other than future reality, it yes. seems. Well, just a little background. <laughs> have you heard just nothing going go with us? me for a minute? <laughs> You want to take us to a place you don't want to be on the way to where you're wanting to go? All right, all right. I'll start, I'll start out differently. <laughs> okay. I am in a relationship with someone, a man. So you're taking <clears throat> us to a place that is less than what you want on your way to something more? Not fair that we choose you. <laughs> no, it's not. To... <laughs> But, but you are the very best one for this. <laughs> really? Oh, great. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Your desire is very clearly focused within you. Yeah. And you are right on the brink of so many things that you are wanting. So it can go either way. We can talk about what isn't wanted and go there. Or we can talk about what is wanted and go there. We can talk about what has been and get more of that. Or we can talk about what is and hold that right where it is. Or we can talk about what is wanted from where you are. In other words, here you are on this turning point. What okay. do you want to talk about? You just answered part of my question. What I want in a relationship is I want a partner that I can be open with, that I can, can All right, now discover let's, this let's deliciousness. Go there. Let's not make it sound like it's somebody else. A friend was saying to us, I see two people walking down the beach. And we said... Are you one of them? <laughs> so, we're wanting you to get in there. In other words, have you seen those virtual reality games where they put a helmet on you and you stand up there looking like a spaceman, but you see all kinds of things? Well, you're in there. In other words, you're the one walking. You're the one smelling. You're the one moving. You're the one whose hand is being held. You're the one whose face is being stroked. You're the one whose heart is singing. And so you want to get in there so that you can exude a vibration from you. In other words, as you feel it, you emanate a vibration that becomes your point of attraction. As you talk about it as if it is somebody else, nothing is changing for you, you see. So then your question is, well, if I get in my virtual reality and I give my current partner a personality makeover,
what happens to my partner? In other words, when the universe lines me up with this vibration, does my partner come? Or does a new partner come? And we say, does it matter? Okay, that was, that was my question. And you say, matters to my partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to find the thing that feels good to you. And there's a very high probability that when you see your partner as you want to see your partner, you begin to offer a vibration that causes your partner to see you the way your partner wants to see you. When someone gets into this virtual reality that we are talking about and gives their existing relationship a makeover that is thrilling and practices it so much that it feels like it's really happening, it feels more familiar than what has been happening, right. what happens is the relationship just evolves 99 times out of 100 to be that which you are envisioning. For the most part, you are holding it in the place you do not want to be I know I'm doing by that. noticing what is. I know that. Last yeah. evening, Jerry and Esther had dinner in this hotel, and they were sitting in a part of the restaurant where there was a long booth bench and then several tables. And so the couple that was sitting next to them may as well have been seated at their table. And all four of them could hear everything that the others were saying, but all four of them pretended that they were not hearing <laughs> anything that anyone was saying. And Esther observed a couple that she guesses have been married for a few years and the zing is gone from their experience. They are having an experience together, but neither one of them is very thrilled by what they're having. They were not hard on each other expressly, but it was as if they were living in two different worlds and neither one of them was all that interested in what the other one was living. And as Esther listened, she kept wanting to interject something into the conversation that might bring life to them. It was hard for her to just let them have their boring life. <laughs> the woman was just sort of complaining about life in general. Everything was hard for her. Her job was hard. Her hours were long. Her employers don't appreciate her. They aren't giving her enough time off. She's going to a wedding she doesn't want to go to to a place she does not want to be, wearing a dress she really does not want to wear. Everything that she is anticipating is not the way she wants it to be. And Esther wanted to say, then don't go. Don't go <laughs> to those places that you do not want to be. And her mate was thinking basically the same thing. But he's learned from past experience not to go there. Because what he wants to say is, if you don't like your job, quit. And if you don't want to go to the wedding, don't go. And if you don't want to wear that dress, don't go. But here is this young woman trapped in the beliefs and responsibilities of her life and not liking any of it. Now, as Esther's been chewing on this since seeing them, and because she sees so many people that are sort of going through the motions, who are not allowing themselves to live the brilliant lives that the universe is capable of delivering to them because they're so stuck in regurgitating what is. She did not hear one word about how they would like it to be or how she would like it to feel. There was no planning about how it could be better. It was all, well, this is like it is and this is what we always talk about and you know how they are and you know how they are. And that's why we're talking to you. Not fair to give it all to you all at once. We're giving it to everyone and you're soliciting it. What we want you to realize is that you get to paint the picture. You have so much more leeway and so much more latitude and the universe is so much more responsive than any of you have ever believed that it is remarkable that any of you spend any time telling it like it is and less like it is is thrilling you out of your mind. That's the only excuse you have, knowing what you know, to tell it like it is. And if there is anything that is not worth telling it like it is because you would like it to be different, then get into that virtual reality. Play there all the time. Go there, go there, go there, go there, go there, go there, go there. Spend so much time there that the universe thinks that's you. And when the universe thinks that's you, because that's the vibration you're offering, that's the life you'll be living. You see? Okay. Nice to know. Thank you. So we have beat you to submission. Yes. <laughs> You are hearing it's all perfect. of that very clearly, aren't you? It's yes, perfect. you're doing very well. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed.